welcome to uh, our episode of the Cross Words. Um, I'm Pastor Dennis, and this is my wife Stephanie Dennis, and we are just going to begin a study um, right now with a very important subject, and that very important subject is why do we preach the cross? Why do we teach the cross? What what is it about the cross? And why do we teach the cross? Uh, and why do we say the cross? Uh, if you look at Colossians chapter 2, where we're going to begin uh, reading from scripture, we're going to begin our first episode and study just to answer those questions. Why do we preach and teach the cross? Colossians 2 and 13 is going to give a starting point for this very important subject. Uh, if we read that right now, Colossians 2, verses uh, 13 through 14 and 15. And they're going to give the, uh, the first idea of why. Uh, verse 13. Uh, it says, And you, being dead in your sins and the, un and the uncircumcision of your flesh, has he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses? Um, you want me to go to 14? Yes. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of of the way, nailing it to the cross, to his cross. Uh, we're just uh, reviewing this <clears throat> just because uh, if you tune in to our study from here on out, anything that you hear come from us is going to be always directed to the cross of Christ. So uh, we just felt like we needed to explain to you why is it that you're going to hear us talk about the cross all the time. We may talk about faith at times. We may talk about other uh, topics, but it's always going to be centered around the cross of Christ. Yes, and so yes. that's um, where we're coming to you um, at this time, explaining to you uh, why do you hear the cross. And my husband said before, uh, we're not speaking of a wooden beam. Uh, we don't worship the the cross that Jesus died upon. The symbol, right? Um, itself. We are speaking of what he did, what what it meant um, as to what he did, what yes. came from that. The very act, the very action of Christ, and um, what he's done at the cross, and this is what we are we are emphasizing, and this is where our faith need to be. It's in that finished work. And we're going to explain why our faith should be there and not in this area. Why should it only be here and that's it? And so that's what we're going to talk about um, during this time. If you look at verse 13, it says, And you, being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, has he quickened together with him? Having forgiven you all trespasses. What verse 13 is saying here is we were dead. And all of those that are out there today that haven't uh, accepted Christ, they are dead in their sins. We were dead in our sins. But what Paul is saying to us, we have been made alive by something and through something and we couldn't couldn't have been made alive except we have we have we have left one state first and that first state is we've been baptized into Christ's death and that's the first step in order to be made alive we were made alive by being baptized into his death uh, Romans chapter 6 Paul tells us that uh, that uh, know ye not that you were you so many of us received Christ we were baptized into his death and being buried with him and likewise we we rose with him him being our substitute so with that said we died with him we were buried with him and we rose with him in newness of life so us being dead in sins uh, before we accept the Christ is where we were. That's where that's 
that was our condition. That was our state. Uh, being ruled and dominated by the by sin, by the sin nature, the adamant nature, the sa satanic nature that uh, that every man uh, is born with. We ourselves have walked in that arena, mm -hmm. been born in that arena. Oh, Paul says in in uh, Romans chapter seven, that oh wretched man that I am. Um, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Romans chapter 7 is when he says that. It's because we have been born a, a child of wrath, a child that is headed to hell, a child that is, that is meet and fit for hell, conditioned to go to hell. But what, what Paul is saying right here is that through what Christ has done, his death on the cross, the power from that, the power of the Holy Spirit working, the power that raised Christ from the dead has quickened us together with him, the Bible says right here. And with that, he has forgiven us of all our sins. So it is at the cross where sin was atoned. It is the cross of Christ and what he's done there that has that has brought the victory in our lives. That brought the victory in my life. And this is why we preach and teach the cross. So the question um, I, I hear is that um, from Christians is that I know what you're saying. Um, that's how I got saved. I know Jesus died on the cross for me. Mm -hmm. um, but why do you have to stay there? Why do I hear it come from you all the time? Because I already know that he did that. So why are you staying there? Why can't you move forward? You stay because that's elementary. We all know that. We know that in, as children in Sunday school. Why do I hear this from uh, somebody who's supposed to be giving me meat? Okay. Um, why do you keep taking me back to the elementary things? That's the question. Well, a person that does not understand Calvary, whose life have been spent in, in by default through various teachings and law keeping. That, that is going to be the question they ask. That, that is what they've been taught. Is that this is elementary that we're teaching. This is uh, the first step you know, to salvation uh, hearing what Christ has done and, and believing that he went to the cross. But we move on from there. That's what many say. They, we move on from there. We go on to the throne. Uh, we go on. But if you look at scripture, Paul said we preach Christ crucified. We don't preach the throne. That's right. We don't preach uh, Christ on the throne. We preach Christ crucified. Although Christ is at the throne of God, on the right hand, seated at the throne of God. But we preach Christ crucified. This is what Paul preached. This is what stands out in 1 Corinthians, uh, uh, what Paul says. He says that flat out bluntly, that we preach Christ crucified. Mm -hmm. And if you go to Hebrews chapter 2. The scripture tells us plainly where the victory was won, where the victory is, where it is won. won. Hebrews 2 and 14 says, it says, For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death, through death, he might destroy him who had the power of death. That is the devil. It didn't say through the resurrection. It said through his death. Although we're not knocking the resurrection. It was very significant and important. It is significant. But that's not where the, the, bat, what, that's not where the battle was won. That's not where our victory was won. It says through his death he defeated 
him who had the power of death. That is the devil. He defeated Satan at the cross. Mm -hmm. He defeated the devil at the cross. And this is where the victory was won. And verse 15 says, and delivered and delivered them who through the fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Through fear of death, all whomever they are outside of Christ, they are abiding in fear and in death. Why? Because sin still reigns in their life. They are still under the law of God and the penalty of that law, which is the wages of sin is death. And that brings fear in the soul and heart of the individual. Being up under that law, being uh, enslaved to, to sin and being kept under the thumbnail of the law, which they can't keep. That right there is fear and bondage to the individual. And, and if, if you think about it, any problem that we have um, as Christians, I'm speaking as Christians, any problem that we have stems from sin. Okay, um, Does it mean that we are um, separated from God and we're a sinner? It just, any problem that we have, any issue that we're having stems from sin. And... If I give you any other answer yes. other than what what was uh, the remedy that God gave us, which was Christ and him crucified, because the Bible says that it was him that destroyed sin, um, then I'm not giving you the answer to overcome whatever it is that you're struggling with, that you're having an issue with. So I have to give you the only answer that God gave us all. So when we teach and we preach this, yes. um, that this is the only thing that you're going to hear is the cross of Christ because I want you to be free yes. from whatever it is that you're in um, bondage to. That's what um, we want. It could be something, the smallest thing from gossiping to um, you know adultery. It doesn't matter. Whatever it is, it stems from sin. And... Um, so that's the answer that we're going to give you. That's the answer that we give ourselves from the word of God um, to one another. So we're going to give it to you because we've seen um, the Lord deliver us. Yes. And yes. he's delivered us from Christ crucified only, our faith being in that. For years and years it's been in other things. It's been in ourselves. It's been in our church. It's been in you know rituals, whatever. And, you know, we think that we've, we've overcome some issues, but overall, overall, at the end of the day, we're still dealing with the same stuff um, until we hold back and we let go of everything else and we face Christ. Yes. We face Jesus Christ. We took the word of God and we saw what he was saying. And all that Paul preached was Christ crucified. If you look at these scriptures, um, um, but we preach Christ crucified. Yes. I am crucified with Christ. That's all he keeps telling. When that's he preaches, what he that's what he's talking that's about. That's what he's talking about. Lest the cross of Christ should be made none effect. He says, for Christ sent me not to baptize but to preach the gospel. But to preach the gospel. In other words, he didn't send me to do anything except to preach and give you the answer, which was Jesus Christ and him crucified, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made none of none effect. And the other one, for the preaching of the cross is to them who perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. That is the power. The power of God. That's what we are giving you. It's the power of God. And where does that power lie? It lies in the Holy Spirit working in the heart and life of an individual. That's where the power is. It's in the Holy Spirit working. And how does he work? He works exclusively within the finished work of Christ. Faith in that finished work. Yeah. And this is why it is the power of God, because without faith exclusively in that finished work, the Holy Spirit cannot work. 
He cannot do what's needed to do in our life. Therefore, that individual is, is, is sitting there with issues in their life that, that is not resolved because their faith is wrong. The Holy Spirit hands a tie because he can't do what he needs to do and rid them of, of, of the sin, the sin in their life reigning. And he desires to do so, but he has a law that he's limited to, to uh, operating uh, by. And that law is faith exclusively within the finished work of Christ. Paul said, for the spirit of, uh, of life. The spirit of life in Christ Jesus, the, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. He says, for the law of the spirit of life, that is the Holy Spirit, has made me free from the law of sin and death. And with that said, that's how the Holy, Holy Spirit works. That's how he operates. Yes. If we look down at verse 14 in Colossians chapter 2. It says, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way. Look at this part here. Nailing it to his cross. Yes. How was it taken out of the way? What happened to blot out the handwriting of ordinances? He's talking about the ordinances contained in the law. The law of Moses, the Mosaic law, mm -hmm. it was taken out of the way, the ordinances that was against us. Where was it, where was it taken to? It was taken to the cross. Yes. It wasn't taken to the resurrection, and I'm not knocking the resurrection, but it was taken to the cross. Yes. Why? Because it had to be atoned for through his blood, through his death, through his blood. And that's how it was taken out of the way. So what was against us, which was the commandments and the, and the ordinances of the law, the, the curse uh, of death, the penalty of, of the broken law. Jesus nailed it. It was nailed to the cross with him. Nailing it to his cross. Verse 15 says, And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, tri triumphing over them in it. You look at that word, it. What is it referring to? The cross. Yes. He triumphant, tri he made a show of them openly, triumphing, over them in it, yes. in what he did at the cross. That word, it, is referring to the cross. That's what it is being said right here, is the cross. Glory to God. I'd like to, um, to go back to what you said about the resurrection, um, how we're not demeaning the resurrection at all because uh, without the resurrection we would have new life we would not have new life in Christ um, but Paul preached you know some people say all you preach is death well Paul preached death so much because uh, there you could not have new life without death okay so I want to go to 1st Corinthians uh, chapter 15 verse 17 it says, um, because I've had people give me this scripture saying, uh, well, you know, trying to prove that um, we should be preaching the resurrection um, for answer to sin. Okay, and it says, and if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. You are yet in your sins. And if you look at that, you have to have a death before you can have new life. Okay, um, like I said before, when Jesus died, he he was risen, and it was not in question that he would be um, 
that he would raise from the dead, just the same as us. As soon as we have died with Christ, we automatically are a new creature in Christ, a new creation. So it says, and if Christ be not raised, that's saying if he was not risen, then your faith is vain. Yes, your faith would be in vain because your faith is supposed to be in Christ and him crucified. If he did not raise from the dead, then that means that he didn't atone for all sin. And it says, You're, you are yet in your sins. This verse is completely um, true when it says, you are yet in your sins. So you would still be in your sins if Christ did not raise. Then, yes. Does that make sense? Yes, yes. So you would still be in your sins because the resurrection uh, proves that he died on the cross, that he atoned for all sin. So you can't have one without the other. Yes. Okay, you can't yes. have the death of Christ without having the resurrection. Yes. It's all in the same. You can't have the resurrection and nobody's died yet. So we have so many Christians that want the resurrection. They want the resurrected life, but they don't want to die. They don't want to, um, to die in Christ. That means that you are yet, the, the word of God says, you are yet in your sins. So if you have not died with Christ, you are yet in your sins. So I just wanted to bring that verse out because, um, you know, like I said, people just keep talking about how we don't, we all preach death, 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 you know, keep bringing you back to the place of death. Well, if I don't bring you back to the place of death, then you won't be living the resurrected life. Yes, yes. And see, that's what's being uh, ignored and skipped over. Uh, they're preaching uh, uh, the resurrected life to to many people, and they don't even know uh, that um, they 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 must be and they have to be first crucified with Christ, that they may live, and not them, but that may Christ may live in them. Yeah. He lives by self being uh, crucified. That's how he operates in the life of an individual. That's how he moves. That's how the Spirit of God moves and operates. By what? By self being crucified with him. The, the old man being crucified. That is how uh, the Spirit began to move and to operate in the life of an individual. By our faith being placed exclusively in the sacrifice, that, that, that moves self out of the way. Yes. That's what it does. That's what happens. It moves self out of the way. It crucifies self with us placing our faith in that finished work exclusively. It therefore removes us out of the way. And therefore it opens the door for who? The Holy Spirit to do his job to work and to, to bring about the miraculous, the things that, that need to be done that we cannot do. If you look at verse in, uh, in Colossians chapter, chapter 2 verse 14, if you look at uh, the second half of uh, verse 14, it says, And took it out of the way, and nailed it to his cross. And right at the cross, there's a semicolon there. Going along to verse 15, that semicolon means that there are two ideas there. And the use of a semicolon places that places verse 15 in relation to yes. that which is in front of it. Mm -hmm. That's what the semicolon does. Instead of using a period there and starting a new sentence, a semicolon is there in reference to what's in front of it. In other words, it relates with equal value to what's in front of it. He nailed it to his cross, and then the next part says, and having small principalities and powers, which means that he defeated the enemy and all his demons. Where? At the cross. Mm -hmm. At the cross. That semicolon there tells us that that second hat, the, the second hat behind the semicolon, is in reference to what's in front of the semicolon. Nail it to his cross. He nailed the power of the enemy to the cross. 
Yeah. His power to reign and to rule in the life of the individual who places their faith in his finished work, in Christ's finished work. Having small principalities and powers, he made a show of them. In other words, he in front of the whole universe. He made known that they were defeated, yes. that they were conquered, and that sin had been therefore atoned and finished. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Triumphant over them in it, in the cross. That's what it is referring to. In what he did at the cross. Yes. Yes. And I just, um, I was just thinking too, um, I was just, in my mind is going about what um, I hear Christians say. And um, it's not... I guess it's not always uh, Christian struggling is the issue with some people. It's, you know, well, now I want to move on to, um, you know, my destiny, what God has for me, what I'm supposed to be doing for him. And all of that can be related to the resurrected life. And so I'm still going to go back to the cross because um, you cannot do anything for God. You can't walk in his will if your faith isn't exclusively in Christ and him crucified. So when, um, you know, you, you want to know what God has for you, when you want to walk in, in the newness of life and all of that, I'm still going to direct you to um, what Christ has done. So I'm, we're always going to direct you to him because um, that's where the Holy Spirit, Romans um, 8 and 2 says that the, for the spirit for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus the spirit of life is the holy spirit and he is in Christ yes. so in in order for the spirit of god to move to guide you yes. to use you you have to be within that framework you have to be your faith has to constantly stay at um, the cross of Christ um, because that is that's where the holy spirit is Yes, yes. And we have to understand that if we don't understand where the battle was won, where the victory was won, then we don't understand the gospel as a whole. Yeah, you can't go you can't go anywhere. You can't, You're talking about going further. Yes. You won't go anywhere. You can't go any further. <laughs> Matter of fact, you, you'll be lost. You yeah. will be lost. You'll be lost even in, with your own thought that you believe. Yeah. You will be lost because you can't understand the gospel yes. without understanding this. Yeah. You, can't, you can't understand what, you cannot walk in victory. And what I mean by victory is walking uh, in victory over the world, the flesh, and the devil, over sin in your life. Over bondages in your life that are that may be still there, that issues with sin that may be still there in your life that are that are reigning. You cannot have victory. See, we can't we can't stop doing what we do within our own self. It cannot be. We cannot beat sin. If we could, Jesus didn't have to come. There was no purpose for him coming. If we could, if we can stop sin in our life, if we can stop uh, uh, the misery in the world and the pain in the world, if we can stop, if we could stop that without man within his own self and his will, then Jesus didn't need to come. So he had to come because we couldn't do it, because we can't do it, and. Uh, he had to come and do it for us. And with that said, we have victory through that finished work, mm -hmm. through faith in that finished work. And he has triumphed, triumphed over the enemy for, for you and I. And we don't, we don't fight the enemy. Mm -mm. We don't fight the enemy. We fight the good fight of faith. Yes. We, we fight to keep the faith That's right. in that finished work. Yes. Because Jesus defeated our enemy at the cross already. 
That's right. For you and I. And we don't fight the enemy. You know, when when I was going to church in the past, you know, they, it used to be uh, preachers or that I would hear preaching and they would be talking about how how they, you know, how you need to fight the devil and how you need to to uh, to do this and to do that and to uh, you need to scream and at the devil and you need to uh, we, we do this that method too. or that method <laughs> when when he's coming against you you need to you need to go by this way of doing it in order for him to leave you alone and it's all flesh mm -hmm. it's all operating from the standpoint of the carnality of the flesh yes and what is that going to do to the enemy? The flesh is part of him. That's right. It's not going to do anything but cause him to, to do what he's doing even on a greater extent to you. Why? Because the only thing that has stopped him and that can stop him is faith in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Yes. And when your faith is in that, he has no rights to you. He has no rights of ownership right. to you. He has no right to bind you any longer. He has no right to, to place you in bondage, to keep you in prison. He has no legal right to do that. Why? Because he knows what Christ has done himself. He knows himself that he has been defeated at the cross. Yes. He knows himself and all the spirits of darkness do too because the Bible says right here heaven, heaven and heaven small principalities and powers he made a show of them openly triumphing over them in it that verse 15 says. And I think that's where the, the struggle is when the Bible says that we are to fight the good fight of faith why is that something we should fight? Because it's so easy to go back to our ways of doing things. It's so easy. It's easier to think that I've got to do this. I've got to fight the enemy um, rather than just resting. You know, it's just human nature. You would think it would be easier to just rest and give up and let the Lord do it. Yeah. But in our human ways, we always want to do something. You know, I know me, I'm a doer. If, if I don't feel like I'm, I'm involved doing something, I don't feel like it's going to get done. Yes. And so the, the battle is, is keeping my faith yes. in what Christ already did. Yes. And by me doing that, that's when I enter into rest. Yes. Okay, so that is the battle. Um, that's the battle for all of us. And, and if we understand that the whole, the entirety of the Word of God um, is Christ and Him crucified from Genesis to Revelation. If we understand that, that He spoke of Christ being crucified in the Old Testament, and, it, and it's, that's the foundation. And if you don't have that, then you don't have the Word of God. But I was just looking at this scripture in John uh, 16 and 14. It says, uh, Jesus says, He shall glorify me, speaking of the Holy Spirit. For he shall receive of mine, and he shall show it unto you. Um, so the Holy Spirit is going to glorify Christ. He's not going to just glorify the name of Christ or the being of Christ. He's What is he going to glorify? He's glorifying his work. And so if he is not being glorified as the work as, as to what, what he has done on the cross, then what you think the Holy Spirit is, is not of the Holy Spirit. Yes. And so we've got to really be careful that we don't get caught up in, in things in our churches um, and really with ourselves also thinking it's the Spirit of God um, because our feelings, our emotions, um, things like that can really deceive us if we allow it. That's why we have to know what the Word of God says. We have yes. to divide the Word of Truth. And if he says he shall glorify me, then I need to make sure that whatever's being taught, whatever's being preached, uh, where I go to church or whatever I listen to on the TV or Internet, whatever, if they're not glorifying Christ and him crucified, then the Holy Spirit is not there. Yes, yes. As a matter of fact, if self 
is being glorified, if self is being exalted, flesh is being glorified or exalted, you know that God is not there. The Holy Spirit is not working because the carnal mind is enmity to, toward God. Yes. The carnal mind is not subject to the law of God, the law of the Spirit. That's what it's referring to. It's not subject to the law of the Spirit, and neither can they please God. So we know that if self is being taught, it's the emphasis. Building up self is centered around drawing you to building yourself up. In any way. In any way. Instead of leading you to self being crucified yes. with Christ, then you know that that is not the gospel. That's right. Then you know that that is not the truth. Because that's what Satan did that got him kicked out of heaven. Mm -hmm. If we understand our adversary, what happened in, in way back when, when Satan was kicked out of heaven, we would know that it was because of pride and self. It's what caused him to get kicked out of heaven. He said that I will exalt myself above the stars of God. I will. Yes. I will. In other words, myself, me, myself, and I is going to do this. And anything that builds up me, myself, and I, mm -hmm. instead of leaving me to self, me, myself, and I being crucified, Yes, there should be. Then no more we mess. know that it is the influence of the adversary. Yes. We know right there, then and there, that it is the enemy. It is leaven inserted into truth, which will lead to a spiritual uh, uh, dissension. It will lead to descending in spiritually. Uh, in your soul, it can lead. It will lead to death ultimately if you continue in that direction. So, what need to be said is, this is what the way God designed this message is to rid us of that which has caused all the problems from the beginning, yes. which is ourselves, which is ourselves. There should be no more of us. Yes. There should be no more of us at all. Um, John 3.30 says, He must increase, but I must decrease. Why does that say that? Why does uh, several other verses talk about um, that I should go away, <laughs> you know, and there should be more of Christ? It's because there's... There should be no more of us at all. Even um, once once we have risen with Christ, it's the Bible says that um, that it is Him that lives through me. Yes. So even now that I am living a resurrected life, I am living this new life. It's yes. still not about me. It's, it's not. still I'm still not here because He's the one living through me. Yes. 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 You know this. This is what Paul says right here in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 1, starting with verse 32. Paul says this. He says, For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek out the wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified yes. unto the Jews a stumbling block and unto the Greeks foolishness. But unto them who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. And if you go to chapter 2, verse 1, mm -hmm. it says, And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you, which Save is, Jesus Christ and him crucified. Which is, I determined not to know anything, uh, not the kingdom, not the resurrection, uh, not finances, not marriage, not my best life now. Nothing except what? 
Jesus Christ and him crucified. Because that is where the power is. That yes. is where the power of God is, operates. It's from faith in that finished work. That is where the victory was won. Yes. That is where sin was, was atoned. That is where Satan was defeated. That is where it is. And anyone that comes against that very fact is under the influence of the adversary. Yes. Anyone that attacks that, anyone that, that tries to move anyone away from that very fact is influenced by the wicked one. The and I want to make known that today yes. is that they are in being influenced by the enemy because this is where the power of God is. The Holy Spirit is able to work. Back in the old days, in the Old Testament, he wasn't able to work because sin was there. Mm -hmm. Sin was still there. Although they were sacrificing bulls and goats, it was not enough to take away sins, mm -hmm. to take away the sin of man. They weren't enough. But the perfect sacrifice of Jesus Christ the perfect Lamb of God. When John saw him, he said, Behold the Lamb of God yes. who taketh away the sin of the world. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Behold the Lamb of God who taketh away the sins of the world. Glory to God. He shall save his people from their sins, Isaiah prophesied. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Because it required a lamb from God, a perfect lamb without spot or wrinkle to defeat sin, to defeat its power, to redeem you and I, yes. to redeem man, lost humanity. It took the perfect blood of the lamb. Glory to God. Amen. Yes. So why do we preach the cross? We preach the cross because it is the answer um, for sin, it is the answer uh, for salvation, to give you salvation. But it is also the answer for sanctification and how to live for God. Yes. The cross of Christ um, is the answer. It's the answer. Um, to live for the Lord Jesus Christ, to live a victorious life and not a life of failure, not a life of misery um, yes. and having a, a miserable Christian um, life, you know, walk with the Lord. Yes. It's not meant for you to um, to just fail all the time. It's not meant for that. Uh, we're supposed to live a more, have a more abundant life. Yes. And yes. the yes. cross of Christ gives that to you too. Um, not just a more abundant life for salvation, but here on this earth, while we are here, it is the answer to live that more abundant life on this earth. Yes. And the cross works. I just want to reiterate that. What Jesus did at the cross works for man. It works for every need that man has. Yes. Because the Holy Spirit operates from faith in that finished work. It works. It deals with the heart of man. It deals with marriage. It deals with uh, the homosexuality uh, sin that's in this world that's prevalent today. It deals with all the sins that are out there right now, even the most horrible sin. Christ and what he did at the cross, he has defeated those sins. It, he addressed it at the cross. I want to just real quick add this in. Uh, it's also anything that we need. Uh, the Bible says that he has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Yes. So anything that you need. Anything you need. Um, finances. That's not a bad word. Finances. It's, it's in the cross of Christ. It's in the cross. Anything that you need. Like my husband said, uh, in your marriage, in your children at your job, you know, whatever it is that you need in this life, it has been answered in what Christ did at the cross. It's, it's all wrapped up into that. See, what, what, what hurts us and what has hurt us before, we, before we've uh, accepted Christ is that the Holy Spirit wasn't there to bring about the life that we needed in our life. 
So every area of our life was uh, a result of death because sin reigned. But because God has put everything we need to life and godliness and living in Christ, those things that, that we need and desire that are full of life, God has already put them in Christ yes. for you and I. Amen. And we have run out of time um, with this, uh, this episode and session of the cross words. We're just going to just, um, just go ahead and close and say just thank you for watching. And just join us again <laughs> with our next episode. And I just want to leave with you this very fact that you need to remember and we want you to remember is the cross words. Amen. The cross words. We'll see you next time.